Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land. It would sleep and rise night and day. And through it all, the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So am I the only one that expected to have a rainy, awful day today? <laughs> this was absolutely glorious. What a wonderful day. And thank you all for coming to share an hour with us. It's wonderful that you're here. Today's readings are actually a bit different because they actually tie into one another pretty well. And that's not always the case with readings. Today, each reading somehow ties into the idea of the kingdom of God. In Ezekiel, the first reading, the prophet uses an allegory to speak about restoring power to the Hebrew people. Although Ezekiel doesn't use the actual words, talk about restoring power is a reference to the kingdom of God. And then in Paul's letter to the people of Corinth, he speaks about how we are away from the Lord and how we eventually long to go home to the Lord. This speaks to the now, but not quite yet, aspects of the kingdom. The promise has been made, it just hasn't been fulfilled for us yet. And in Mark's gospel, Jesus cuts right to the chase. I sort of see him as a frustrated teacher here. I'm sure you know what I mean. The teacher tries to pry the answers out of the students, but eventually they figure it's not worth the gray hairs, and they just give them the answer. So Jesus does the same thing. He says, this is how it is with the kingdom of God, and then uses parable, parables to help them understand. References to the kingdom are all over the Bible, but it's an incredibly difficult thing to understand because it's part of a huge mystery. We can try to understand the infinite, but our human minds just can't grasp it. These parables, though, they give us a starting point, and it makes sense to try and start there to understand what this kingdom of God is all about. Mark's gospel is a very Jewish gospel, so this talk of the kingdom of God would have been something that they would have talked about in their everyday lives. They were a messianic people waiting for a Messiah, the successor to David, the anointed one, so the talk of the kingdom of God for them signaled a restoration of something that they had lost. You'd think then that Jesus would have used parables that had to do with restoration, 
mending a garment or fixing a broken building or something like that. But he doesn't. He throws them a curveball, basically telling them that they're thinking too small. He tells stories that don't speak of restoration. Instead, they speak of transformation, becoming something new, unexpected, and different. Seeds are an interesting example here. In two different ways, they show us all about this transformation process. First, a seed is about a promise. That mustard seed, it's a tiny little shell right now. But when it's planted, eventually it becomes something very different. It becomes something completely amazing. It's difficult to believe that everything it will become is in that little seed already, but it's true nonetheless. That's the promise that God makes to his church and that each of us is given at our baptism. The seed of the church was planted when Christ overcame death. And when the time is right, he will see that the church and each one of us will transform into something incredible and truly unexpected. We will transform into the kingdom of God. The second part of the transformation has to do more with the care and the feeding of that seed, what it needs to reach its potential. In the first parable of the gospel, Jesus said that seeds grow of their own accord. There's nothing any one of us can do to make a seed grow or not grow. It's entirely God's domain. However, we all know that the process of seeds becoming fruit trees or a mustard seed becoming a great bush can be helped along. Seeds are going to do what seeds are going to do, but with the help of a good gardener, they can become something truly brilliant. Each of us, with the help of the Holy Spirit, can be more than just seeds. We can help tend the garden. Gardens need to be watered and fertilized. Think about it. Are each of the seeds in our garden getting the water that they need? Each night, how many children in the city go to, go to bed hungry? How many people are without jobs? How many people work two or three jobs? It's obvious that some of the plants in our garden aren't getting the water that they need. As, gar as gardeners, it's our job to make sure that plants get water so that they can grow, in the fruit, grow into the fruit tree that they were meant to be. Gardens needed, need to be weeded and tilled. The injustice of war and the conditions it causes that we see here in our city, hunger, slavery, refugees, poverty, these have no place in our garden. And we need to rip out these weeds wherever we see them. This isn't a job for others, it's a job for each of us. We need to get on our knees, get dirty, so that these weeds don't choke out the good plants. Finally, gardens need sunshine. And here I'm spelling it S-O-N, shine. We need to make sure the world hears the gospel, the message of the Son of God. We heard it. Now we need to pass it along to others, the food they need to grow. Each of us can participate in, in transforming God's garden, and as we watch it grow, the kingdom of God will slowly be revealed to us. Think about that this week. What does God want me to become? And how can I help tend God's garden as we await the coming kingdom?